Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, so the last couple days or so, I've been seeing numerous posts on Facebook um, where people are pretty appalled by the recent comments made by Sheikh um, Hamza Yusuf regarding racism and social justice. Um, so I'm going to just read basically what I just wrote this morning on Facebook um, because I think there's a lot of issues um, in our community and in other communities that our leaders just aren't appropriately addressing. I listened to Yusuf's 45-minute speech, um, which was basically in a question-and-answer format. Um, needless to say, I'm not surprised by Yusuf's comments because they are essentially the same as what we hear from most Muslim leaders. Um, I call these people state scholars or establishment scholars. Most of them actually work closely with the government as well as law enforcement. And, um, you know, many of them actually receive a paycheck as well. Um, further, you know, many of these scholars and leaders actually work <laughs> as part of, um, you know, various anti-terrorism and countering violent extremism programs. Um, so on the surface, these programs and their, their proponents claim to be about preventing terrorism and other acts of violence. In practice, however, the real purpose is to disrupt and suppress um, you know, so-called radical social justice movements such as Black Lives Matter, um, No Dapple, Free Palestine, and pretty much any other movement that resists colonialism, capitalism, and imperialism. Um, so, you know, Islam is not just a religion for Arabs. It isn't um, a religion just for South Asians. It isn't a religion just for white converts. It's a religion for anyone who takes the Shahada and strives to follow it. Our communities need new leaders and real leadership, and it's time to do away with the old establishment scholars who are more concerned about the image of Islam in order to basically appease the white capitalist class rather than promote the real values of Islam. Many of these leaders claim to want to get the quote politics out of Islam. Well, <laughs> you know, Islam is political just as it is also spiritual. It's religious, charitable, legal, social, and so forth. Why? Because Islam is a complete way of life. It's not just one thing. It is a complete way of life. Um, Sheikh Yusuf, like so many other, you know, scholars, are completely dismissive of racism and other forms of institutionalized, excuse me, institutionalized oppression in American and other Western societies. Their speeches often indicate that they literally have no concept of the history of this country, of the genocide of indigenous people, of African slavery, or of any of the past and present struggles many communities are dealing with. They have bought the quote, American dream, thinking that this country is a paradise. And it may certainly feel that way um, to those who came here from various other places where they experienced um, oppression, sometimes serious oppression, that they haven't experienced here. Um, that does not, however, make it acceptable to become complacent about current issues that don't directly impact them. Um, so many of these scholars actually are quite privileged as they receive funding to purchase airline tickets and hotel reservations as their career revolves around traveling around the world and giving speeches. I have to wonder why so much local knowledge and wisdom, however, are completely cast aside by local leadership in order to bring in these various out-of-state and even out-of-country leaders to tell us pretty much a lot about nothing. Um, you know, newsflash, most Muslims do not actually live in the suburbs um, or make six-figure incomes. Most Muslims, especially... <laughs> especially worldwide, um, are actually are, are poor. Um, most Muslims are poor and working class and have struggles that many of these, you know, so-called Islamic leaders simply don't understand. 
they really don't identify with us in many ways and 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 likewise we don't identify with them one example of the hypocrisy and um one example of the hypocrisy and disconnect that i witnessed and experienced related to the orlando shooting earlier this year um some of these same leaders that ostracized me from the masjid for being transgender and who won't even allow LGBT people in their masjids are the same ones who went to the national news media um, to tell everybody how much they supposedly stand with Orlando and the LGBT community. Well, I mean, okay, I, I, I believe they're telling the truth that they, you know, condemned the attack that happened. That much I believe they're telling the truth on. Um... But they did not really stand with the LGBT community because, again, I mean, you can see the hypocrisy. Um, I mean, essentially, you know, they don't care about what other communities, they don't care about other communities or struggles until it becomes a PR opportunity. I really wish this wasn't true. Um, I hate to be so critical like this, but, I mean, I'm seeing the results how can you kick me out of your masjid for being trans and then go tell the LGBT, which includes the trans community, that you stand with us? I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's complete hypocrisy. And again, it's a total disconnect. Um, and, and so when the reporters and the cameras are gone, basically they go right back to bigotry and business as usual. These things need to change um, if leaders are not representing the people they claim to serve, then they need to step aside so that new leadership can step up. We need leaders in our communities to do a better job at both learning how to be an ally to other communities, as well as learning how to appropriately utilize our own allies who seek to stand with us against Islamophobia. You know, some say I shouldn't be so critical of our leaders because they are imperfect and human um, and may be ignorant about certain things. Okay, well, we're all imperfect. We're all human. Yeah, nobody knows everything. I get that. Um, but I disagree with this mindset because leaders are held to a higher standard um, because they're entrusted to guide the UMA. Um, it is their responsibility to learn about new things as they come up. And there really is no excuse for intentional ignorance. This idea of saying, quote, you know, well, this isn't our issue. Um, it's, it's a cop-out. It really is. Um, if you are a Muslim, then following the principles of Islam is your issue. If someone is hungry and you can feed them, it is your responsibility. If somebody is suffering from an injustice, it is your responsibility to help alleviate their pain and stand up to their oppressors. It doesn't matter whether this involves other Muslims or whether it involves non-Muslims. This concept of just making dua and being patient that our leaders constantly promote is actually not the Islamic way. Um, Islam teaches us to trust in Allah but still tie your camel. We need to have sabr, or patience, um, and we do need to make du'a, um, but we also need to take action where and when appropriate. Um, and that being said, racism is absolutely unacceptable in Islam. It is haram according to the Sharia. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that Muslims aren't racist. Um, nor does it mean that Muslims should not do more to combat racism. And likewise, Muslims can both be victims of racism and be perpetuating it at the same time. Islamophobia is rooted in three problems. Racism, xenophobia, and hatred of Islam itself. Yusuf never went there in his discussion, despite the fact that the discussion actually opened with the topic of Islamophobia. Yusuf is a white male and he needs to understand the privilege that he has and to actively work against systems of privilege and oppression. Um, our communities have a lot of work to do and, you know, it's, it's, 
none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. We're none of us are perfect Muslims. I understand that. Um, but this is not the time to be complacent. This is not the time to be apathetic. We are going to be held accountable, each and every single one of us, on Yom al Qiyama or Judgment Day. So we need to do what we can to be better Muslims ourselves, to make a better world for each other, for all human beings, for every you know, form of life, and we have to hold our leaders accountable. If they're not saying or doing the things that really represent us and represent what needs to be done, um, if they're not, you know, representing Islam as it's meant to be practiced, um, you know, if they're not willing to listen to the people and make the adjustments that need to be made, then, then again, you know, they're, they're, they're obsolete, they're inadequate. It's time for them to step aside, you know, and it's time for new leaders to step up. It's time, it's time for people to step up, you know, and, and, and do the things that need to be done that aren't currently being done. Anyway, that's, these are my, this is my opinion. Um, you know, this is already on my Facebook. This is going on YouTube. So, you know, feel free to discuss, debate, <laughs> or get angry if you want to. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to be silent about these matters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.